Great. Okay, so this is your introduction to nursing leadership and health policy. This is part of module number one. I'm going to apologize right away for the graphics. Um, I try to use fancy graphics, and sometimes they don't uh, seem to translate well on this particular site. So bear with me. You will get a, um, a hard copy of, well, you'll, you'll have access to printing this, um, as a hard copy if you so choose. Again, this is a supplement to what we've discussed in class today, and it is your introduction to nursing leadership and health policy. So we have to think about leadership in two perspectives, one at the organizational level and two, um, as a mechanism to influence how health care is provided really within this country. So what we're really talking about, the profession of nursing and its influence. So how can we make nursing more of an influential sort of profession to where we can really impact the way that we provide care? So the question has been raised, um, you know, why do we really need to be concerned with nursing leadership and health policy? I mean, quite frankly, it's pretty easy to just kind of uh, stand by the bedside, do what you need to do at the bedside, and go home at the end of the day. But with more than 3 million nurses, we have to think about really how influential we are in terms of providing care. So there are continuous insurmountable problems within our healthcare system. There's a lack of resources to solve these problems. Um, there's a lot of individual apathy amongst nurses. We have too many nurses that just quite frankly don't want to be bothered with leadership. Yet we are considered the most trusted and least influential of all of the professions in health in healthcare. So with more than three million of us to be trusted so much but not to have any influence is quite problematic. Nursing organizations really provide a unified front. Many of us aren't even involved or aren't aware of what stance organizations are putting forward. So effective leadership is critical to organizational and professional success for the nursing profession. So a lot of us would assume that the Affordable Care Act would have really revolutionized healthcare. But we have to really understand that this was just the tip of the iceberg. Now, granted, um, the number of insured individuals is projected to rise to uh, at least 20 million people by the year of 2016, which is a rise of um, about 10 million people from um, uh, 2014, which is a significant raise. So access to coverage doesn't necessarily mean access to care. And this also does not provide um, the health of a population because there are so many other factors that underlie that. So this course can't really cover what all the Affordable Care Act does because it is over 2,000 pages long. Um, and, and that really reflects the complexity of the law and what's really needed to change infrastructure of health care. Now, arguably, this is considered one of the most significant pieces of social legislation passed since Medicare and Medicaid, and, but it continues to find political ideology at this time. So there's four main components of the Affordable Care Act. One is that it creates value. Um, so hopefully in that value we are increasing patient health and outcomes medical er and decreasing medical errors. You know 